This video is made possible by Dashlane. Stay safe on the internet for free by signing up for Dashlane at dashlane.com slash RLL. When you think about France today, you usually think about this France in Europe. But France is actually all over the place, like here in North America, here in the Caribbean, here in South America, here in the Indian Ocean, and over here in the Pacific Ocean. 18% of France's entire territory is actually located in all of these places that aren't Europe. And the reason for that is because of empire. You see, France used to be a much more outgoing country than it is today, so they took over a bunch of places that aren't France. Eventually, these non-French places decided that they were, in in fact, not part of France, and France let all of them go except for these scattered places still left over today. But what if all of a sudden overnight, all the territory that used to make up France's colonial empire suddenly became French again? How would that affect modern day France, and what would this modern empire in the 21st century look like? First, let's give back to France all of the territory that the French Empire controlled at her territorial peak in 1921, just after victory in the First World War. This includes Lebanon and Syria in the Middle East, an enormous chunk of Africa, and a significant part of Southeast Asia. Back in 1921, this empire had a population of 94,696,000 people, or about 5% of the entire world's population at the time. The center of the empire was located in European France itself. 41% of the entire empire's population lived here at the time. But this is far from the case today. A lot has changed in the century since, and today, the same empire with the same borders would be home to an enormous 505,188,000 people, over five times greater than the population in 1921, and roughly 6.5% of the world population. However, European France would only account for 13% of the entire empire's population today, largely due to massive population increases across Africa and Asia over the past century. Now Vietnam is the single largest country inside of the empire's borders, taking up 19% of the entire population and being home to about the same number of people as lived across the entire French empire in 1921. When taking a look at the geographic population spread of the whole empire today, 5% live in the Middle East, 13% in Europe, 23% in Southeast Asia, and the vast majority of 59% live in Africa. Despite none of these areas belonging to France today, the historical influence of France across all of these countries and even beyond can be seen by the continuing importance of the French language. 29 countries across the world maintain French as an official language, and 13 of those maintain it as the only official language. Seven countries in Africa have a majority of their population that can speak French, while 11 more have significant minorities where at least a quarter of the people can speak it. In total, French would still be the most commonly understood language across the modern empire, with 31% of everybody being able to understand it. Arabic would be the second most common language, with 24% understanding it, while Vietnamese would be the third best understood language at 19% understanding. Hundreds of other languages would be spoken across Africa and Asia as well, while the religious beliefs of the empire would also be very diverse. 43% of the population would adhere to Islam, 24% would be Christians, 6% would be Buddhists, 7% would be a mixture of various different faiths, while 20% would follow no religion, largely due to the trend of irreligion in France and the state-sponsored atheism of Vietnam. Across the entire empire, these would be the 10 largest cities, with the top 5 being Algiers, Hanoi, Casablanca, Paris, and Ho Chi Minh City as the largest. France alone has a nominal GDP today of $2.9 trillion, which is the seventh largest in the world. But the addition of all this territory would boost that economy up to $3.9 trillion and transform it into the world's fourth largest economy, just barely ahead of Germany, but remaining behind Japan. And finally, there's the military power of this new empire to consider. France already controls the largest military in the European Union, with the sixth highest defense budget in the world. She is one of only 10 countries 
countries to currently possess an aircraft carrier, possesses an additional 10 nuclear-powered submarines, and perhaps most importantly, she controls the third largest nuclear weapons arsenal in the world, possessing approximately 300 warheads. That being said, this added territory, people, and their existing militaries and equipment would supercharge the already powerful French military to staggering proportions. All combined, the French Imperial military would boast 2.1 million active duty troops, the largest such number in the world, and would in addition have 3.8 million reserves, for a total military size of 5.9 million soldiers. This would be a ferocious military that could probably take on mostly anybody in the world besides maybe the Americans or the Chinese. But there's one more interesting thing we can do to experiment here. Just for fun, here's some things that would happen if we added in all of the territory that the French colonial empire once controlled in North America and the Caribbean. This includes huge parts of both the United States and Canada, as well as both Haiti and the Dominican Republic. 77 million Americans, 25.2 million Canadians, and 21.5 million people in the Caribbean would suddenly find themselves as French subjects, which would boost the total empire's population up to 628,900,000. But what's more interesting than that are the economic results. The American territory alone adds nearly $4.2 trillion into the French economy, a higher amount than the entire collective empire's GDP was to the 1921 borders and with far fewer people. With this and the other new western territories, the French empire's economy now stands at nearly 9.2 trillion dollars, surging far ahead of Germany and Japan but still remaining beneath China and the United States. Perhaps even more bizarrely, the loss of this massive amount of territory for America still wouldn't be enough to knock it down even one place in the list of the world's largest economies. In effect, America could give back to France all of the territory that it gained from the Louisiana Purchase and still maintain its position in the world as the largest global economy at over $15.2 trillion, even if France hired the world's greatest hackers and cheaters to steal America's land, it still just wouldn't be enough. Giant France would still just be the world's third largest economy. While your land probably can't get stolen by crazy French government hackers, a lot of other stuff can. That's why whenever you make an account online, you should really make sure that your password is more complicated than this or you could lose your stuff to hackers who may or may not be French. You really should have different passwords for each of your different internet accounts, so if one becomes compromised, your others won't too. But remembering all of these complicated passwords for all of your different accounts accounts is challenging, unless you have Dashlane. Dashlane generates very secure passwords for you, stores them all in one super secure place, and then autofills them on your devices when you go to log in so you can stay safe online. But the best thing is, this is all free if you click the link in the description or go to dashlane.com slash rll. But if you want to get all their premium features like a VPN, syncing across devices, and dark web monitoring, you can use the code RLL to get 10% off when upgrading to premium. Thank you for watching.